cable limiters, and NEC. What developers and EPCs need to know. In the complex world of solar interconnections, few components create more confusion than cable limiters. They're often misunderstood, frequently overlooked, and in the wrong conditions, they can delay your project or shut it down entirely. For developers, EPCs, and project stakeholders, understanding cable limiter requirements is essential to avoiding costly setbacks. So what exactly is a cable limiter? It's a protection device used in electrical systems to isolate a conductor during a fault. Unlike fuses, cable limiters aren't designed for overload protection. They're engineered to limit the impact of short circuits by breaking the fault current path. They're also not rated the same way as fuses. They're sized based on the conductor type and material. That makes proper specification even more important. In solar PV systems, Cable limiters are most commonly used in line-side interconnections, especially when overcurrent protection isn't available nearby. Here's the challenge. Their requirement changes depending on what version of the NEC your project jurisdiction is using. And across the US, that could mean 2023, 2020, 2017, or even earlier versions still in effect. Let's walk through the key changes in NEC over the years. In 2014 and 2017, cable limiters were required when overcurrent protection was more than 10 feet from the connection. In 2020, the allowance expanded to 71 feet, as long as cable limiters were installed within 16.5 feet of the interconnection. In 2023, the NEC removed direct requirements for cable limiters and referred installers to general service entrance rules in Article 230. And now, with the upcoming 2026 NEC, the requirements have shifted again. Overcurrent protection is required within 66 feet, but if it's beyond 16.5 feet, then you need cable limiters within 16.5 feet of the interconnection. Engineering supervision is also required, and the service voltage must be 1,000 volts or less. So how and where should cable limiters be installed? There are two primary methods at the termination point near the utility connection or in line somewhere along the conductor within the allowable distance. The NEC doesn't require limiters on both ends, but manufacturers may recommend it for systems with parallel conductors. Here's the catch. When one conductor in parallel set trips, the others can overload. Since the cable limiters don't protect against the overload, this can lead to insulation damage, terminal overheating, or long-term system failure. That's why engineering judgment and code knowledge is key. Indoor versus outdoor installation also matters. The NEC 2020 introduced clear language that requires cable limiters for indoor interconnections to prevent fire risk. Outdoor systems may be exempt, but again, it depends on the version of the NEC your AHJ is using. So, why does this all matter? Because failure to account for cable limiters can stop your project in its tracks. We've seen it happen. Consider the case where a utility inspector shows up, finds missing cable limiters, and denies permission to operate. Now, you need a second shutdown, rework, and recertification, sometimes with a third-party testing lab. It's expensive, it's time-consuming, and it's avoidable. That's why we stay ahead of the curve. We monitor NEC updates in every state and municipality we work in. We call out cable limiter specs directly in the plant sets. And we guide our clients, developers, EPCs, and project teams through the complexities of NEC compliance so they can avoid last minute surprises. Reach out to our team at purepower.com for expert design service and technical guidance.